Welcome to the Rich Life Projects. Today we're talking to one of the hell men, big wave surfers, MMA fighters, TV personalities, one of the best dudes I know on this planet, uh, Richie Vass. Welcome, my friend. Thanks, Rich. Thanks for having us, mate. It's mate, to be here. What an honour. What an honour to have you in the uh, in the booth today, just talking about all things. What's been happening lately? What's life mate, got on? Life, it's... um. Mate, over the last few years, been a few curveballs. I'm just sort of getting on the the better side of all those, and just yeah, mate. I've had a sp- split from the ex misses and just moving house and do all that kind of drama. Yeah, but yeah. life's good. Like like it's been busy actually on the tools. Just, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, which has taken a little bit of a priority uh, of late. But hanging out with my daughter, who's almost six, and yeah. that's been a blast. And uh, mate, it's just. Still just trying to keep a focus on the simple things, yeah, mate. Get in the water when I can, train when I can, um, spend time with friends and family. And yep. yeah, so like, yeah, can't complain. Still, uh, still in the Maroubra area. Obviously, you'll never, never move out of there, brother. <laughs> no, well, I spat the dummy last week when I, <laughs> I was living with my good mate, Bryce Harrington, who's right on the beach at North Maroubra, oh, roundabout. Man. And uh, I've been there for the last two years and, and just the last couple of weeks. I had to move 500 metres back from the beach and, um, yeah, almost. Oh, yeah, yeah, it, was, it was hard. It was hard. You know, not waking up and seeing the ways, but no, nah, mate. I'm still very, uh, very grateful and blessed to to be still be in the area. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, so love the place. Very proud to, to you know, call that place home. Hundred percent. Now let's get back. Uh, you know, a lot of people probably do know and don't know, but going back to the growing up, obviously you're you're a Maroubra boy through and through. Uh, how long have you lived in Maroubra? Like since since early days? Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, Mum and dad, you know, were for you know, first their house in Coogee, then Matraville, then they then out at Little Bay, so all you know, uh, five to ten minutes drive from River Beach, and and uh, yeah, from as from as far back as I can remember, like surfing was just all I ever wanted to do. So every spare moment, I'd be dragging mum or dad down the beach <laughs> to, to watch me while I was in the waves. So yeah, yeah. Maroubra's always been home, you know, yeah. like in and around that area, and then yeah. Parents split when I was 10, 11. Yep. Old man moved down the beach. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a couple of metres back from the beach. I, it kind of took the sting out of the divorce, you know, from, <laughs> from a young fella's <laughs> point of view. Yeah, uh, positives of uh, the split, you can go down the beach every yeah, day. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, yeah, since then I've, you know, I've lived at Dad's. Mum still was living out Little Bay. And, and then once I was old enough to move home, yeah, I've just always been living around the beach. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. And you've got a few, uh, few of the crew down there, obviously uh, – the Edmonton brothers is is sort of your your childhood sort of friends as well as yeah. um, you know Mark Matthews. Yeah, I've seen some uh, you know some stuff with obviously Mark's been a close friend for a lot of years. Has been absolutely. Yeah, and he was uh, he was back when you moved to Maroubra. He was around that area as well. Yeah, from there. Yes, yeah, so I, I met Mark. I guess when I joined the Maroubra Board Riders when I was uh, probably like a, a couple of years in. I was like I was like ten or eleven around you know early yeah. teens. Um, uh, yeah. And, uh, I was also in the Maroubra Surf Club at the time, um, uh, cause I was living at Little Bay, which was a bit of a drive to the beach. I could leave my surfboards down there. And that's how I started meeting all the boys and especially yep. through the board riders, you know? Yeah. Right. Uh, and yeah, Mark was one of them and, uh, yeah, always look up to him. He's, he has a year older than me, but I always really held him in that big brother kind of light yep. and, uh, looked up to him a lot and. He's been a close mate for a long time, but as life goes on, like you said, the Abaddon brothers, they're all moved out of town now. Mark's moved out of town. A lot of my close mates have, uh, yep. you know, have um, got families and whatnot and, and um, have uh, opted for a quieter life, you know, out yep. of Sydney, which I, yeah, I can't blame them. It's, yeah. it's, that, that idea's come and, uh, yeah, keeps floating around my head more and more these days as well, but yep. yeah, still very close to, to them all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see you. Uh and then Kobe's over in Bali. Yeah. Loving yeah. life over there, the big fella. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like surfing, surfing nothing but just perfect waves every day. Yeah. Mate, the biggest headache is like, would you get a massage or lunch or, you know, go for a surf? You know, <laughs> mate, a tough it, life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He makes it look pretty good, mate. So, 100%, 100%. And uh, Sunny, Sunny's, where's Sunny at? Sunny's over like, uh, like Northwest WA. I think, I think oh, is the, he? Yeah, Move over uh, there. Uh, like on the, on the mines. Yeah, oh, okay. He's like, got a pretty good, good gig over there. Beautiful. Uh, Port Hedland, maybe around yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, he's doing his thing over there. And, yeah. yeah. Pops in and out of Maroubra every now and then. We catch up. But, yep. And Joy, uh, Joy and Dakota. The yeah. is on the same as as uh, kind of in between Sunny and Kobe. I think okay. he, he works over in Australia, and then bounces back towards Bali. Like in between, yep. in between, he's like he's uh, he's flying fly out rog, res, uh, like roster. Yep. And uh, mate, Jai's sort of doing his best. He's had his he's had his he's, uh, his demons at his battles for a while, yeah, but um, yeah, haven't seen him for a while. But yep. yeah, he's just uh, floating around doing his own thing. Yep. Yep. And that's sort of uh, getting back to because it always fascinated me. Obviously, you hear hear different things, and when I was obviously growing up as well, Maroubra, you always hear you know the the bra boys, and <laughs> which which 
when did you sort of go into there? Were the Bra Boys already started when you went in there or um, when, yeah. w- when when did all that come about for you, joining sort of with the Bra Boys, the surf riding and the fighting and all the rest of it? Yeah, well, um, like – there's always been there, like yeah. that, that that brotherhood and that community and that that uh, that gang of mates have always occupied that the area. You know, Maruba has been called different names over yeah. many different years, you know. But around the nineties, um, at the time, yeah, that sort of that that gang mentality was sort of drifted across from the states, and that that was um, had definitely taken place in, in Sydney and, and taken effect. And and then the boys just got to the point where they were sick of. You know, loads of car loads coming down and 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 um, getting the blues down the beach, so they banded together and um, said, "Well, you know." These fellas call themselves this name and that name, and because yep. used to be a nightclub at the Seals Club right on the beach, you know, which is a attract um, a bit of riffraff. So all, all, uh, all sorts, all sorts, yeah. yeah. Um, so I was like, yeah, in this kind of early to mid nineties, the boys started um, come up with the you know the term that we'll, we're the Bra Boys, and this is our you know the, yep. being the last three letters of Maruba, and and um, start getting yeah. tatted on themselves, and that's when like you know, like I said, it's always, it's always been there that yeah. brotherhood and that that community. But the, the you know the whole Bra Boys concept took off around then, and and uh, you know I joined the board right as late in the nineties yep. uh, as a ten year old because me me mum who you know we living at Little Bay was sick of driving me down the beach and <laughs> sitting on the sand waiting for me to come yeah. in. So she walked into Maroubra Underground, the surf shop down there, and uh, Hair Bear Paul Chandler was uh, was behind the desk. Yeah, he's a, he's a working down at Wollongong University now. Was uh, oh, he's got some at the dean or something or some yeah, right <laughs> crazy on. roles? Funny how our <laughs> life changes. Oh, uh, but he's uh, he's a legend. He said, yeah, bring him down, you know, sign him up in the board riders and we'll look after him. Yeah. Basically what it was. I was leaving my clothes and my board down at, a, at the surf shop from yeah. there on in and, and going to board riders every month yeah. and, and love it. And that became, that became my, you know, my family away from family and they took me on their wing. Mum was stoked and she still got nothing but praise to sing to about the boys, even though it came with a, uh, yeah, fair share of drama and, <laughs> and riffraff and, yeah, yeah fun, man. bit a little bit of mischief, but yeah. Well, when, like, when you're young and you're in sort of like that, community and and to be honest I didn't even I didn't realize the bra boys like the actual bra is the last letters of the Marubra. Yeah, yeah. So that's I didn't even comprehend that. I just thought bra being cuz I'm hopeless when I say to people, "Hey bra, what's yeah, going?" Yeah, yeah. It's just, you know, when you're on the North Shore with all the crew, yeah, they're yeah. like, "Hey bra, bra." So you yeah. just sort of gets into that that yeah. sort of sound and you think, yeah. "Oh, that means brother." Yeah, yeah. So that's how I thought the bra boys it was yeah, like right. the lettering that. Well, it I makes didn't sense actually in that regard too. Yeah. Yeah, but I didn't didn't actually uh comprehend yeah. that the bra was the last three letters of well, the Marubra. Well, and that's Marubra. what Marubra's known for like known as too, like when it's abbreviated you know, as a bra, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just like you so uh, yeah, that's that has been. And like I said, like I'm you know almost forty now, and still love the place. Still very proud to be a bra boy. Still, um, they're my closest mates today. Yep. Still, and um, how many? Yeah. How many would you say were sort of in that in that community of the bra boys? Obviously, the uh, Abbott brothers was, you know, the the good pinnacle of starting, you know, evolving yeah. the bra boys. Yeah, but Sunny and Joy, and you know, the o- over the years, I think. You know, there's been hundreds of crew through through the uh, yeah, Maroubra. You know, um, yeah, like I say, in like you know, in the mid '90s, and you now that's you know close to 30 years ago, and uh, you know these boys who are you know touching 70 now are bra boys, and really? these young fellas now, you know, who are still getting the tattoo, and so it's got to be well over, you know, yeah, 500, 600, and, and like it's bra boys to have you know, these are tattoo, but it's also just boys who don't know the tattoo to who who lived and breathed down there all their life yep. too with uh, bra boys in my eyes as well so yep. it's um man, there's hundreds of them and uh like i said they're living all over the country now yeah, like yeah. You know, so they're all dispersed but yeah, uh, yeah. they're still uh, uh, like anything when you've got that sort of close uh knit community especially like the bra boys and and the the 90s and the things that you've all been through together yeah like that never leaves you that's that's Absolutely. pretty much like you know the memories but in in your heart you know you come across another Bra boy, yeah. you've got those memories together. You know what each other is prepared to do. Yeah, and uh, that's that's always a fascinating thing to me. It is, and that's something that like it never never dies. When you've had going through those experiences, um, man, I might not see one of my mates for ten years and just like walk through the door, search and just embrace like it has been two days. You know what I mean? Yeah. And just laugh and just talk shit about you know yep. back in the days and ask questions about the family now and how things and work and. But uh, like like no time is lost, you know. Yeah. What I mean, saying like my, some of my best mates from high school, it's just like you go through those years together, those, those kind of formative years too. Yep. Um, you sort of like yeah, you you see each other again. It's like yeah, no time is lost. O- almost in a way, but probably more magnified. It's like you know when you you share the the ring or locked on with someone. It's like you share this bond, this experience that can never be replicated, can never take away. 
And he's like, that's like a small snippet of it. Like yeah. I see mates who I've fought, you know, I, I, did, I didn't know from a bar of soap before the fight, Yep, had that fight. And then every time we see each other, like just, yeah, come in again, you embrace well, and you've laugh. What's happening now? You've What's he doing? Something. It's like your, your spirits have shared yeah. the, the combat it's battle. Like a, yeah. It's like, it's like a small snippet. So like, if you can imagine that, I feel like just magnified over like, you know, hundreds and hundreds of experiences, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? You sort of, it's cool. And I know that, uh, yeah. Like, like I said, going through life, there's ups and downs. You go through some tough times, and the, and yeah, they they're just as valuable to be there in those times as well. You know, your yeah. mates and uh, to be able to bounce off and uh, know you can pick them up and call, and and, and uh, they'll be for you in that regard as well. You yeah, know, not just not for the good times and all the riffraff and no, the, no. the yeah. You know? But they're obviously the crazy times with the the um, you know, going through that time in 2003. I think. Uh, Hines, yeah, he was yeah. like the standover man back in yeah, the day, Tony and Hines, he's yeah, yeah. he's sort of uh, he's death, and then you've got um, you know the the pub brawl with the the cops, yeah, um, back Marky in two thousand and two, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that was then obviously uh, dealing with that, and then the Cronulla riots, yeah, you know. So what you were there, were you there re- pretty much all those? <laughs> I was probably too involved in Marky Matthews 21st with the cops. Um, but, yeah, that that, uh, that was all in and around, probably like a five-year period, you know yeah. what I mean? It was just looking back now, I just scratch my head and go, fucking wow. Like at the time, because you're in amongst it, it's just, it's just the norm, you know what I mean? It's just another day and the madness is just part and parcel of, of – but you got all those crew there. around you too that are like, yeah, just like brothers who who are going to back you 100. Yeah, and, and aren't like uh, and feel invincible by it too. Like it's just like I said, it was. But I look back and like, fuck, how the fuck that shit just happened? And just you'd think it was just the norm. And um, yeah, you know, like at Marky Matthews 21st, we were all blind drunk having a ball, and yeah, you know, there was a. I just happened to be on the same night as a as a police Christmas party too upstairs, a level upstairs, above. And, um, okay. We were totally unaware of that and they were all like off duty police, obviously just, you know, plain clothed and at the end of the night everyone's drunk trying to squeeze in a um, a lift to go back downstairs and I thought it'd be funny because at the front of the lift I could see my best mates like, you know, cheering me, come on, jump in, jump in, we're yeah. going out. Behind them were all the off duty police officers okay. and I just took a run up because I knew there was no room in that lift, you know, and just try to run as leap, swan dive into that lift, you know what I mean? Just just thinking that, that you're, was you're, all me mates, you know? Yeah, and yeah, that yeah. just, the, the guys in the back of the lift, the cops just took offence to that because we just squashed them and turned like <laughs> into a bit of a melee and um, that's what spilled out of the lift. Because you, you, you were pretty much the, of the bra boys, the larrikin, the, <laughs> the, the, the funny dude. Because uh, I, I can't, you know, when I was obviously through my fight career and, and younger too, I used to do obscene things, yeah, get, yeah. get nude on the dance floor in yeah. Tamworth, you know, a little Nudies, country uh, town. Nudies, I oh, thought, were the favorite. best. Yeah. If I got best. drunk, the boys would go, fuck, Fogg is going to be nude for sure. Yeah. But then you'd have your problems, you know, and I, I yeah. thought it was all funny, but yeah. I know, you know, you being the larrikin of the, the bra boys doing your nudie runs and- Yeah, oh, I, I had a good blue in the Coogee Bay, actually, with nothing but a pair of socks on because I got nude <laughs> on the dance floor and I danced too close to a bloke who, who didn't like it and we just ended up punching on him <laughs> in just in a pair of socks. So, yeah, so um, I've always done it in good, like, in, you know, good nature. I want to offend yeah, yeah. Like, but it's just I'm the same. Like I've always been. But some people I'll just take it out of context. Yeah, like, yeah. And, and it's probably you know you, you do that and you don't yeah. understand that people yeah, think oh that's understand. disrespectful. But yeah, when you're doing it, you just go My fuck. I'm just having fun. As close to someone too, I'm sure I'd be offended <laughs> as well. Like, but um, yeah, I've always been that one. I've got a little bit of a rubber arm, and the boys know that. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty easy to get me to do something stupid, and and. Yeah, you know, I've always suffered from small man syndrome, so yeah. I was just like, yeah, I'll fucking do it. I'll hey, there's not it. too yeah. many people that admit that, brother. <laughs> yeah. Not many man, people. I was joked about that, um, about that concept of small man syndrome and then end up a whole chapter in a book I did with Sean Doherty just because uh, it's probably what fed me into fighting, fed me into like big wave surfing, fed me just that little that little chip on my shoulder, you know, thinking yeah. like, because I'm a little fella, that, like, I, you know, I can do the same as every other cunt can do, you know, but yeah, so um. Yeah, I like to have a good laugh and, yeah, always been that class clown too, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I fully understand that, brother, <laughs> where that's come from. Going into, obviously, when you're growing up in Maroubra and you're surfing with the Abaddon brothers, you're surfing with all the boys, uh, big wave surfing started to, to come about and mm. obviously challenging yourself. This is, I don't know, probably the, I, I love surfing, but when I watch crew like yourself and mm. other crew that take off Julian Wilson and they can take off on bombs yeah. that I think that would kill me. That's, and it's, a, I suppose it's like fighting. You get into another cage with another man. You think, you know, wow, this is going to be a, a one-on-one with another man. No one else is yeah, here to help yeah, me. Yeah. Uh, surfing's pretty much the same as that when it comes to the big wave riding. Yep. When you, uh, I mean, you've surfed pretty much everywhere in the world, haven't you? Like Hawaii, 
Chopu. Yeah. Uh, um, even at home. What's the, the local ones? Uh, Ship Sterns. Ship Sterns and Tassie. Tassie. Yeah, that's amazing. And you got the right over in WA. Like, you know, South Cyclops. West, uh, Cyclops, which is a fucking crazy way. Some footage of that going around. Yeah. Not, not just of yourself, but just Cyclops, Chopu. And, yeah, just all the slabs even around like Sydney, you know, yeah. like Cape Slan, it'll be, you know, called ours. The Cape Fear, the event Cape they Fear, had here. Yeah. Level, um, yeah, then all around WA, South Australia. We're just littered with these amazing waves, you know. And that's, well, what's, um, the, what's the mindset like? Fuck, I'm, I couldn't do it. I, I I pretend like I'm an average surfer. I yeah. love surfing and I've done it for a while, but I'm still average con- yeah. compared when I watch people, when they take off on that that lip yeah. and they know they're going straight into the barrel. Obviously, it's that part of them is like, fuck, that's yeah. hectic, especially when it's going onto a reef and all that. What's the, I suppose it's like anything, you're conditioned to do it. Yeah. But the mindset when you're there ready to take off on some of those massive slabs, what's What's yeah. going through your head at that time? Well, like, mate, for me personally, I, I hate there's not a lot going through my head. I'm like, like yeah, the less truth. thinking the better is for me. You know what I mean? I'm, okay. I'm the kind of guy, and like me and Marky Matthews is always joke about it because he's like a, a super calculator guy. Like he analyzes everything and like you know, he's got a real thought process and works. You know, he just having to ride this wave. I'm going to draw this line, watch his step, and you know, let go of yeah. the, these kind of waves. Yep. Um, and I'm more of the like just fucking, if especially with a towel, mate, just – See a big one and just whip me into it. I'm just gonna let go and just not think, you know what I mean? Because yeah. I think my then I'll overthink it, you know what I mean? That's right, yeah. And just try to go yeah. off feeling and autopilot a little bit. The same with yeah. fighting in a way, you want to train yourself to a point where, like, when you're in the cage or the, the ring that night, yep. you're not, you're not, you know, of course, you're thinking, but it's more like you want to go on instinct and it's autopilot instinct, yeah, and yeah, you know, all that training come to the to the front, you know, yep. all those repetitions. And uh, yeah, it's kind of the same in, in surfing, you know what I mean? Um, the night before is normally like the battle, you know, like knowing like, fuck, because you're sitting in bed and then you can't stop thinking about 100%. it. And like, you, know, you don't want to be in that that place on the day, you know what I mean? So yeah. I just want well, to like, um, yeah, go, go, go. You know, I just like, yeah, just like say yes to before I think, you know what I mean? I start. And, uh, and then, and then, you know, once you're paddling that wave or, or let go of the rope, you're sort of just in the moment trying to make the best little micro decisions as, as possible. And, 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 um, you know, and it probably, it probably doesn't help when you got, you know, crew like the Bra Boys, the Abaddon Brothers going, Screaming pushing you, going, <laughs> get into it, Richie, go. Yeah, and yeah. you mean, oh, man, I'm going for it, I'm yeah. going for it. And you were obviously younger than the boys. Yeah. Um, But it's like any, I suppose, grommets or anyone coming up and, they got, and they're looking at their idols come brothers, come, you know, elderly. Yeah. And you know, when, when they talk, yeah. legends talk, you go, I've got to do this. You know, I want to be yeah. like that or I want to do this. Oh, yeah, and you're yearning for their respect too, you know what I mean? And respect, not just that's respect, probably the like, word, you know, yeah. You're like, for everyone's respect in, in a way, it's that it's that environment too. It was like, a, especially in Marubo, but I think yeah, most places going through those age wins, you know, a male-dominated kind of community you're living in and yeah. like, you know, footy environments or whatever, like fight the fight world. <laughs> it's a pretty um, testosterone-charged kind of little fucking, you know, mm. place to, to try and grow. And, and that's, you know, you want to try and earn your respect and, and, uh, get the respect from your peers. So it's, um, yeah, all of that, you know, they scream, go, go, like you just put your head down and you go, like I'm done to be known as a, like, the guy pulled back, you yeah, know, yeah. Fucking, they'll bag me that, for the rest of the so week, I, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I would never be probably welcome into the Brown Boys, cause <laughs> especially with surfing, fighting all good, I'll, yeah. I'll have a crack, but yeah, surfer, they'll be like, mate. Folks, yeah. get out of there. <laughs> no, nah, like, he's always out there. It's like, and it's like, yeah. But like, growing up down at the beach, if you put your hand up and said you want to have a crack at it, whatever it was, you know what I mean? You got you got the respect from your yeah. peers, uh, whether it be footy, even just career-wise. You know, I want to fucking you know, get me plumbing apprenticeship or want to yeah, yeah, crack yeah. at footy or a physio or whatever. That, that, like, you know, suddenly you just put your hand up and said, yeah, I want to have a crack. Say. Even if it was fucking getting a crack at things that aren't so smart. Or, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Extreme or, like, or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, uh, like uh, yeah, a little bit on the on – the, the crooked side of things, you know what I mean? Or just being a goose and getting a knuckles. Like there was always support and a, like a group of fellows who would back you and join you with it, you know what yeah. I mean? So, um, yeah, like saying you want to have a crack at surfing and you there was the boys who, who would support you, throw boards at you, give you weddings. Let's go, we're going down the coast yeah. this weekend. The waves going to be pumping. Come on, come down, you know, because you've shown that you want to have a, have a nudge in, you know, yeah. in waves like that. So, um, yeah, it's a pretty special place <laughs> to, uh, to grow up. And I was very fortunate to have all these guys to look up to, like, you know, I, I had heroes growing up like Tommy Carroll and, you know, all these international yeah, guys yeah. and, you know, people who were just like, you know, you couldn't really, you know, they're like gods, you couldn't really reach it. But then I, like, I had the same respect and I looked up to them the same way, like guys just from my board riders club, you yep. know what I mean? Like the Abaddon brothers, you know, Mark, you know, Luke Denner, Paul Moffat, like Wayne Cleveland, like all these guys who were just the- Matty, guy, Matty Hoy. Yeah, He was Matty, back on the, yeah, on the yeah, circuit. Exactly. He was a madman. Like, 
Yeah, so just these people like you know, would just write. You'd bump into them every day, and and um, but they they were the, you know your heroes, your yeah, heroes, and and you got to say hello to them, and they just yeah, help you pal out the back, and you know, show you how to get out when it was over four. But, that, but that feeling when you're paddling out and you've looked at them at the as your heroes, the next minute you're they go, hey Richie, yeah, and they yeah. know you, and they yeah, say they're, your they're, name, yeah, you're like calling you in the waves, you know, what I mean? like, you don't want to not go if they're calling you in the waves, like yeah, I don't, there's there's not a better feeling sometimes than that when you're into that situation, is yeah. there? You know, when they're calling you first, I'm like, oh, this dude knows my name. Yeah, exactly. Are you going, Richie? Yeah, yeah, I'm going. Yeah. Or oh, they give you a pat on the back when you get a good wave. Like, oh, you know, that's fucking addictive. Yeah, I'm like, I want to get that praise again, you know, yeah, the young fella. Yeah. That's like, that's what you're, you're striving for. And uh, and then you start to, to do it at any cost. And then you want to get that praise from being a goose on the drink and getting the blues, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you start to get addicted to that, that. Uh, and you can't you can't differentiate at that age. Like, yeah. it's probably the best thing for me to be doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, uh, but you know, trying to get that praise for for doing anything in here. But um, when when yeah, you're so. sort of in that in that sort of zone and you're surfing, you're surfing with your idols, and then trying to get the respect from your your peers. And you know, I've, I've, a lot of people have been in that situation where the the funny bloke on the piss, or you know, you run yeah. around nude or something like that. Where, where did it get to a point where, you know, you you say in yourself and you go, fuck, this, enough is enough. Like yeah. it just, you know, what what point does that come to? Because I know, you know, I, I suppose age got me. Yeah, no yeah. more nerdy runs because no one appreciates <laughs> <laughs> the, the old nuts running around. Yeah, dragging on the, on the <laughs> timber floors. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you're lucky enough to drag them yeah. on timber floors, mine's aren't that big. But, yeah. but yeah, where does it get to that point when, you know, you go, is it because where the age and everyone's starting to mature and moves moves on and you're still, don't want to be the one going, oh, fuck, I'm just a larrikin. Where is everyone? Because some people get to that stage where they can't stop. Yeah. And I've got most mates too, you know. Yeah. Still, still doing the things they're doing when they're 18, 21 year yeah, olds, yeah, and, same, you know, same. And, and they're close to 40 and still doing it, or even older, you know, close to 50 and still doing similar things. Which, man, if they're happy with that, all good, like it's 100. But, um, yeah, it got to me, it was like when when I end up getting into a blue and, and getting charged and and uh having to like get extra drive from Sydney to back to the Gold Coast, Gold Coast on a, on a charges of assault, and um, and it was just like it was that little slap in the face where at the time. I was doing okay with surfing too. I had some sponsors backing me and I was getting to the point where I could sort of um, focus on just the big wave surfing and um, Beautiful. push that. And I'd had a couple of MMA fights as well. Uh, it was my early, mid, mid to early 20s, around yep. 23 I, I was. Um, and I had a couple, you know, pretty good wins in, in the in the octagon uh, in a sport that was just emerging, you know, had a bit of a buzz around it. And it was also like a lot of, uh, like a bit of, the bad stereotype as well, but yeah, like it, it was like, exactly. like you could see that where that this sport was growing, yep. and um, so I had these opportunities in front of me, and uh, but because I couldn't shake that, that um, want to always be the larrikin, can't say no to this, can't say no to that. If you know, if someone says something, you, you got to argue, you got to. It's a hard a thing to do with say no, isn't it? Yeah, when you're in that, when you're in that mindset of love and good times, yeah, you feel, you want the good times to last forever, yeah, you can't say no to your friends, yeah, but the ones who want you to say no. You don't care about oh, fuck. I yeah. don't care. I'm just keep going. And then, you know, the ego and the pride was 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 um yeah was in the way of too many things. And it, when it wasn't the way, I was really I was raised as well by my parents. You know, like I was you know like getting in trouble and getting the blues is and just doing dumb things on the piss. It's like not. Well, I knew that wasn't making my parents proud. You know, it wasn't it wasn't what I, not how I wanted to be remembered for either. You know, yeah. like um and my grandma I was I was very close to too, and she was around and um. It was just, yeah. You know, just like when I started reflecting back, oh, like, that's not what's going to make them happy. Now, I mean, our respect for my parents and my family, and um, so like I could never, yeah, could never walk away from an argument. Could always, always if I get on the drink, I always get too drunk. You know what I mean? Yeah. Always, you know, no, get me kid off, do something stupid, you know. Um, and it started coming at a cost of potential sponsors for surfing, potential opportunities in fighting. You know what I mean? It, like grievous body harm, harm charges at the time. Yeah, uh, still now they're still heavy charged. Like I'll probably eliminate my opportunity to go to Hawaii, the yeah. states for fighting, surfing, all that kind of stuff. So that was like, does that, that still carry on today? Like, if you wanted to go and travel to Hawaii now, do, would they say no because you've had a charge? Yeah, I mean, even if it's a couple of drink driving charges, they're, they're pretty strict. In really, the states, you know what wow. I mean? Um, but especially like if you get down with like grievous bodily harm charge, um, yeah, it's like it's very hard to get in the states with all that kind of stuff. Wow. Um, so I was just like. That was a, a bit of a turning point. And luckily it happened when I was relatively young, you know what I mean? Like I, yeah, it was yeah. like in my sort of early 20s, 23, 24, when I was going through this this court um, case and and trying to fight these charges, 
you know, had they ended up pleading guilty because I, you know, I was on the drink and I did get in a blue, but in the, in the circumstances in which it happened, the, the judge saw it and like, well, all just drunk young fellas is carrying on like idiots, you know? So I just, I pled guilty just to a, a lesser charge of assault, but it was like that moment and going through that experience, like looking now, it was a blessing in the skies, you know, yeah. at the time it sucked and definitely like, a low point in my life where I wasn't proud of my actions at all. You know, I was, I was um, remorseful of you know what happened and, and and you know the victim who was involved. Um, but without that, maybe that lifestyle would have true. continued into my thirties. You know true, I mean? true. And, yeah. and it was that turning point where I thought right, I'm going to listen to myself a little bit more now and not do things to impress others all the time and and um, yeah, go back to I guess my family morals. Yeah, you know, and then things yeah. that I knew were like instilled in me, but we're just getting like overshadowed by the, the fun times and what I thought others thought of me and all that yeah. kind of stuff. It's a, it's a hard thing, especially when you're young, <clears throat> growing up and you, you want the respect from the elders and you want, want people to like you and, yeah, yeah. you know, you, you can't say no. It's a, it's a very addictive thing to get involved in. And I used to be like that as well. Like, yeah. you know, always had to have mates around me, always let's go out in the piss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, like things suffer, like family life suffers. Cost, yeah. It does come at a cost. And yeah, but some, you know, sometimes in those, as you say, the turning points for your yeah. life, that's, that was that time where you go, shit. Yeah. And I was very lucky too, like, um, that now nah, this sponsored jet pilot at the time, they, they, regardless going through the court case, they still sort of backed me. So I was very appreciative. I just knew appreciation for, and to be grateful for the, these positive things in my life that were happening, you know, um, I saw promoters, fight promoters here in Australia still wanted to to get me on their shows, even though like, you know, I could bring like a bad image there to their promotion or whatnot. Yep. So I started like looking at things differently and, and, and being grateful for all these really um, positive things I had. Um, and also like I was burning the book at both ends, you know, I, I was training like, you know, hard from Monday to Friday. When the weekend came, I'd be on the piss from, from Friday night to Sunday. It's you know a, what I mean? It's a hard and, line to live in it. Yeah. And <clears> then <throat> at that age, you get away with it to a certain extent, but then to, by actually going, I want to try and make the most of these opportunities and I'll take this serious and I'm like, take a more of a professional approach to it, um, you know, and train hard, like ease off the drink, you know. And then like, you know, you know I didn't care then if my mate said, oh, let's get on the piss. I'm like, no, nah, I'm not coming. I'm coming. I'm like, no, nah, you're a fucking stiff. What are you fighting? Or you've got to train tomorrow, do you? You know, they were like, yeah, but once they saw I was taking it serious, I like, it didn't take long for them to go, yeah, fuck, no, nah, sweet, I can't wait to see you next time. Yeah, yeah, then they're, 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 they're fans you know I mean? come yeah. along to the shows. Once yeah. they know like the little, you know, trying to fucking do that little temptation of trying to drag you back in your old ways and yeah. the work. Yeah, they quickly um become your biggest fan. And and yeah, my good. closest mates were, were never ones actually. They were the ones encouraging me to fucking make change. Yeah. You know, my closest ones like, you know, Maka, Mark, all the all the like, yep. you know, Rooster Ev, all the clients who were, um could see that probably like it's could yeah, the bigger Some, picture. And that, you know, this, this yeah, were were really supportive and um yeah, like I said, I'm grateful that I learned those lessons when I did and, and, uh, and made those changes. I still love to have a beer now and I laugh and yeah, ride yeah, off and have fun, but now it's like you've got a, a bit more of a, you know, a bit more of a holistic like view of it, you know, I mean, yeah. what can happen if, if it goes to either That's way right. in any extreme, you know? And, and you've got a daughter. Got a, yeah. And you've got a daughter, daughter which, which as, as, as I've said, every man that has a daughter finds yeah. what true love really is. Absolutely. And it's, now it's all perspectives are changing and, and yeah. obviously you're getting older like all of us yep. and when you start maturing, you look back at those sort of things. It's not hard to go. I couldn't do that now. Back then, I could, yeah. but I yeah. could, that's not me now. Exactly. Yeah, couldn't do it. Don't want to do it. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like, <laughs> like I said, I still love getting out, like I get on the piss with your mates yeah. and riding off and having a laugh and crying. Just and tears, no, no more nerdy you know I mean? Yeah, and just don't not unnecessary drama and yeah. like trying to like yeah, like I said, just trying to keep yeah, like keep your ego in check it's a little bit simple, and and, and, and like. Again, just a, yeah, a simpler life. That's why yeah. I like. That's a big thing for me now is just keeping things simple. And yeah. time is very valuable to me now. You know, 100%. so I don't want to waste a weekend being seedy on the couch. Cause it's it's funny. It's does. funny how was, how we all do that, isn't it? Like yeah. we all go through our crazy periods, whether it's sport, drinking, partying. Yeah. Then we all get to a. You get to that age, having children, maturing, getting older. Things yeah. aren't working like they used to. Yeah. Then you sit there and go. It's it's fascinating how the life just. Like time just yeah, changes yeah. everything, isn't it? And it's probably the only thing that never gets defeated is yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's it, exactly. It's, yeah, exactly. It's not stopping. It's not changing. Like you got to like if you want to, you've got to adapt make to the it. most of it now and try and get the most out of all. You know, this, this yep. beautiful thing we have life. Like you said, it doesn't slow down for anyone. Um, yeah, I, like I'm grateful for all the the ups and downs and the lessons I've learned. And yeah. man, like I really put a, a huge value just on my time now, yeah. you know, like I work's taking more of a priority now and I've got a daughter and when I, you know, 
I don't want to waste time feeling like shit and dealing with drama and uh, yeah, like I said, just feeling sorry for myself. Like I, I want to be in the water diving and surfing and, and spending time with my daughter and hang, like, doing things that she wants to do. Beautiful. And then using those moments to train too. I sort of love training. That's so, like all these things keep my life on an even keel, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And uh, without doing those because I've, you know, I've, I've wrote myself off in, in some other way, um, I just know like, it doesn't. It doesn't pan out well, you know what I mean? No, like, the so, end result, as much as we like to think it'll end beautifully, but yeah, yeah, yeah it does. And that's the same for like for work as well. If I know if I'm working too much and I'm fa- and I'm and I'm not finding time for the other little things, like I start to feel shitty as well. And yep. yeah, so it's um, yeah, time, just man. the simple things too. Keep time. getting time and then just putting a value on time and not not wasting it. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. And you get and you talk about your sponsors. Obviously, uh, you come across. Sort of mutual friends with the Ruka crew, yeah, yeah. Pat and and the crew in Ruka, they sort of uh, made because um, I, I remember to see you when when you started your MMA career. Obviously from the surfing, because the Ruka crew and brand is basically all opposites of balance, yeah, balance yeah. of opposites, uh, surfing, martial arts, art, yeah. whatever Music, you like. But whatever it encompasses everything, and um, and they ca- they come on board when you started your MMA. No, nah, like a few years in. A few okay. Years in, and it was like, man, I was so grateful uh, and I still am to this day, you know what I mean? Because um, it's a young fella from Australia trying to make it. Yeah. You know, uh, now the opportunity to fight abroad has it, it, it started to present itself. You know, it's hard work. Anyway, if you take something seriously and you commit to it, you know what I mean? Like everything goes on the back burner, you know, work and whatnot. So, yeah. you know, money and opportunity are hard to come by. And, and, and I'm so glad for Pat and the guys and Nathan Webster, time to, to see. Uh, you know, some value in me and, and, and uh, you know, get me on their team because I, I, I love surfing, I, I love mixed martial arts and uh, and present and open doors and, and help me financially with my training and, and at a time where like majority of brands saw you know, an a MMA athlete in Australia, it's just a risk, you know, I mean, it was still called bare knuckle fighting yeah, in Australia, was, you know, yeah, human cock fighting. Barbaric, you know, yeah, no, a lot of fight, like, we were behind the times compared to other countries around the True. world. But, you know, there's a sports science game. Some respect, but still had a pretty bad stigma as well. For like, you know, big big name brands to associate themselves with it was uh, a risk and, and no one was doing it. Like, I could not get um, like backing from yeah. any major sponsors here in Australia. I was getting like drips and jazz from like, you know, Rhino Mouthguards, John yeah. and the family. Like they, they back me because like, they're in the industry. They, yeah, they know what it right. is. And, and uh, you know, local like local little Brent, like brands and, and – um, you know, would help me out, but then when Ruka came on board and said, "No, we want to, we want to back you," that's when I could really just just focus on MMA, you know, just yeah. focus, and surfing too, which is was great because I didn't have a brand to make, and I could choose one or the other. They they backed me for doing both. Um, it, was, it was a brand back in the day too, like BJ Penn, like one of the My legends. Hero, yeah, yeah exactly. like probably pretty much when it's mixed martial arts, yeah. BJ Penn was the you know was yeah. the icon the idol yeah, and next minute you got the same brand wanting to take you on yeah, and patting the crew over there. That's that, that would have been an amazing feeling. It was. Like like I said, like, apart from like, I just, I much I looked up to the guys they already had on their team, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, BJ was my, and still is my number one idol in MMA. And uh, and then, yeah, had this brand that I just, I, I just, I, I loved the brand and what it stood for to say, yeah, baby, we're keen to work with you. I was like, over the moon. That, yeah, that's where I could yeah. sort of put the tools down a little bit yep. and um, really focus on training and, and, and again, they opened door, go to the States and train, go to Hawaii and train with the boys over there. Um, yeah, it's phenomenal, and that's and that's what yeah, basically led me to the UFC. It's because I could I could focus on on that. I had had the backing from, just from just the for the fighting, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And you get uh, you get in the uh, obviously you introduced to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu at eighteen. Yeah, uh, just something different. Let's just do uh, Jiu Jitsu. So training under that, obviously, then obviously MMA starts to pick up. Yep. Uh, Two thousand six, you made your debut yep. on Warriors Realm, as yeah, we were yeah. talking about before, uh, winning by the first round KO. Yeah. Uh, I think yeah. there's footage of that. It looks pretty mad, just swinging, just Eyes closed, his, yeah. eyes closed. <laughs> <laughs> just, the as, the as plan you, was to go in there and grapple, and I just the bell went, closed my eyes, and just swung <laughs> to the fences. Yeah. As you do in your debut, yeah. you're just like, oh, man, I'm, I just want this to be over, yeah. you know, swinging. But that was a great, obviously, first round uh, knockout. Uh, cage fighting. You had four straight wins, basically, in – you come from surf and then you've jujitsu, yeah, and then uh, then you started into having four straight four straight wins in the yeah. MMA. So obviously 
the crew, bra boys, they were getting behind you. Yeah. You started to get a bit of a good following through the mixed martial arts. Yep. And then fighting, obviously, 2010 for the cage fighting championships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just your career started to go through there. I think as uh, when you said parting-wise, you went through four straight wins. Yeah. It wasn't hard. To, once you get four straight wins, you think you're invincible. You think, 100%. man, I'm just come from surfing. Here I am just taking out yeah. all the crew. And obviously everyone supporting you and propping you up. Yep. What, what was the hardest bit when you had four straight wins, obviously on top of the world? Yep. Um, and then obviously when you started to, again, your partying was on the side and, you, you know, yeah, all yeah. that sort of stuff and you come to a loss. How did that affect, you know, the whole, the whole train going forward? Again, mate, it was like uh, I was gutted. You know? Yeah, I didn't l- losing that fight wasn't even a thought. Like going uh, leading into it, I um, I said I had four wins. Uh, there was two knockouts, two subs against guys who were like you know who were rated as well, like Mickey Mortimer from uh, you know up on the sunny coast. Yep. It finally had an integrated uh, you know, mixed martial arts up there. Yep, like it was a really well respected gym. Mick was on, on fire, and uh, mate, he's a great fella and. Um, I surprised myself with that first win, you know what yeah. I mean? I, um, and then, you know, beat some other guys too, had, had pretty healthy records. Yeah, my confidence was sky high, you know. Yeah. I, I was starting to take the sport serious now. Yeah. Um, I was still juggling with, you know, a bit of work and I still, yeah, probably getting on the piss too much in between. Um, but, yeah, just that young, no, no give a fuck, I'm invincible kind yeah, of attitude. It was getting me through. And yeah. then, uh, of course, I came up against that world title fight for the CFC. Bantamweight title against Gustavo Fausaroli. Who's a uh, no, good mate of mine now? He's a legend. He he was, you know, more experienced. He he had fought in Japan and he had just a different approach to the sport. You know, he, he was he uh was more professional about it. And yeah. uh, mate, and he he fucking makes taught it, me a lesson on that night. A difference, you know, eh? Like I thought I was gonna walk, we'll go in there and steamroll him and knock him out and uh, defend the, the takedown. He, he was a really good black belt and um, but he was he had handy hands as well and he was tough and yeah. and um. I mean, in the first round, he caught me with a knee, and then you know, we still went for a five round decision. But I remember being on the corner, I think it was in between the third and fourth round or something. And uh, after the knee, I don't remember anything. And I'm, yeah. arguing, I'm <laughs> arguing with my trainers, thinking, like, you know, I'll be going, going, going in the third, yeah, I'll be going, going in the fifth. You've got, like, you got to knock him out or something, like, because oh, we're losing on points. I'm going, bullshit, the fifth. Oh, fuck, that's unreal. I'm fucked. I'm glad it's last yeah. round. Like, <laughs> no idea where we were, you know. And, uh, but yeah, because Gustavo just, you know, put it to me and uh, out grappled me and, you know, hurt me in the first with that knee. and and uh, after that fight, I was like, fuck, I love this sport. I just went five hard rounds with a guy who's like fucking experienced, being the best yeah. in the country uh, at my weight for sure. And like, you know, he's he's re- like uh, like respected on a global stage. Um, fuck, if I do things, you know, prop, like if I up my game again and take it even more serious and, and branch out and just lift up my lift my training, uh, I feel like I can really make a, you know, a crack of it. So, yeah, of course, it was initial tears, but yeah, then like, yeah, I got, it, it was quickly flipped into like, Uses positive motivation. Yeah, you know? I mean, let's get back in, get back on the yeah, horse, if I, if go I'm, even harder. If I'm fighting these guys at that level of money, just new to the sport, then man, yeah, that's that's a potential. Yeah, and yeah, and like I said, going going into fights with just like a little bit of careless, like recklessness in the band, like you know, just thinking that yeah, I, I wanted to just up my technique in every area and yeah. um, you know take things more serious, and then hundred percent. Yeah, it always. Uh, yeah, it's always a good thing when you sort of get to that stage and you're like, you feel invincible, but even if with a loss, as you say, yeah. it didn't turn into a whole negative, okay, that's it for me. It was like, well, I'm at that level. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to try and stay at this level now. Yeah. And obviously going through, you went through um, the, pr- uh, I think it's Proud Warriors. Proud Warriors pr- promotion. Promotions. Yeah. shout out to Johnny Schmucker. Yeah, love 2011. you, 2011. Yeah, but um, yeah, and, and like- Back on that, I was, I was I was really grateful. Just like like I said, guys like Johnny Schmuck, I just mentioned there, who's no longer with us, and who I, I miss. Um, but just the team around me, you know, Alex Pratt, Bruno Pano, Maddie Gardner, who's my striking coach. Yeah, I, I, I had these guys around me that just like could cut me down if my head was getting too big, true. or or pull me back in line when like you know when I I, I was down the dumps, and yeah. uh, and I was I was forever grateful that um. That martial arts came to my life when it yeah, did, like 100%. you know, in those early twenties. It, sa- it saves was, a lot of people's mind. lives, doesn't it? Yeah. When you when you think about it, people don't from the outsiders don't see too much of it, but when you're in that sort of lifestyle, yeah, and then you get to martial arts, it, it really enhances your life in a positive way. Oh, I, I 100%. believe. And it's still like yeah, 
like I've done some stuff with some youth and some some yeah. PCYC groups about trying to introduce martial arts to young kids who are going off the uh, off the I think rails. We even done something in Newcastle together, didn't we? Back yeah, we have our, done. What yeah. was that? James Tahoon. Uh, Ray Kelly had it. Yes, that's right. What was it? Because I flew down from I think Sunny Coast. What yeah. was that? Um, We'll do it because he headspace, was the word, yeah, right, headspace. headspace. That's what it was, headspace. Yeah, but yeah. I don't know what he called it, but I know there was James, yourself, yeah, myself. Yeah, right. God, that would have been like twelve years ago, fifteen years Long ago. Long time ago, yeah. But that's just a uh, case in point how, how how beneficial it can be for, for the you know, young if, if young most, uh, people of any age, but like youth in particular. Yeah. You know what I mean, uh, martial arts for me personally was um, something that just really changed the trajectory of my life for the better, yeah. and uh, introduced me to you know. The coaches who I just mentioned, yep. who would see my corner from day one, and you know, I'm still close to them you know, all now. Yep. Um, Gardner was he was a he was a bit of a demon back in the day too. Yeah, Maddie, Maddie, Maddie and Owen, his brother. But yeah, just yeah. kickboxing got, days like around the kickboxing scene, not MMA. Yeah, like yeah. Maddie Gardner was one of those. I think back in the day where we even had chimp heads. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> he he, he used to be in Sydney fighting a lot. I used to travel obviously to fight yeah, down yeah. in Sydney, but always used to see Maddie Gardner, and he always be a, just a, a yeah a beast, a, a weapon when he fights. Absolutely, and he always like to like ne I never had a round when I was sparring where I felt. One bit comfortable, you know. He still punches yeah, you too, like you know, forever. <laughs> like he's just a guy who lived and breathed, and like and had, had come from that experience. And that's why, again, I was really grateful to have guys in my corner who, who, who'd walked and, and done what exactly. Like, well, like Alex Pratt was at the time still fighting. Yeah, yeah. MMA. He's Robbie Whittaker's. Yeah, he's uh, yeah, coach. Man, and he's still a, fighting the shows together. So yeah, like, what a great, what a great, not only great coach, but a great human that dude is yeah, too. You know, absolutely. So I was very blessed to have all those guys come into my life through martial yeah. arts, and uh, yeah, they, um, you know. It was just, <laughs> I think we got to jiu jitsu because at the Seals Club down the beach, yeah. uh, Alex Pratt had just moved to Maroubra from Brazil and uh, so did Bruno Pano. But uh, Alex Pratt was going to the Seals Club to the gym to have a little trainer, Steve. And Jai, Jai Abaddon was up yeah. in the gym and just looked at uh, Alex's ears like, fuck, mate, what the fuck, what, what's fucking wrong with your ears? And that opened the conversation. Like, yeah, true. Oh, no, jiu jitsu and he's broken English. And Jai was like, fuck. Next minute they're rolling around the gym floor, like getting yeah. <laughs> showing jiu jitsu. And wow. Alex was showing him all his chokes and putting him to sleep. And next thing, Jai come down the bus, shit, this fucking shit, this can't be showing me the seals, mate. Yeah. She's really like, just been tying me in knots and putting me to sleep. And then next we didn't know, but they're, uh, Bruno and Alex are coaching, oh, teaching yeah. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and River Surf Club, you know, and wow. there's 40 of us there doing it. So just passing moments yeah, like that, you man, know what I mean? And, uh, and Jai and Bruno. Sliding doors moments, they say. Yeah, exactly. Wow. So, uh, man, it's a it's a trip how things all panned out. But like I said, very grateful for the yeah. introduction of martial arts because 100%. it's, um, yeah, it's nothing but, but uh, a good thing for for anyone, any more, any you know, class, any time of your life, yep. any um, socio you know status, it's nothing but brings good stuff. I reckon yeah, positive stuff in it. Two thousand twelve AFC, you fight in AFC, but at the same time you get casted to what's what's the new sort of fad back then, the Smash series, yeah, the, the, the Ultimate Fighter series. That's right. The uh, we, when we took on the, the bunch from the UK, yeah, UK they, Ross the Pearson, yeah, all the Ross boys. Pearson, yeah, yeah. What was that experience like? Because you lived in the same house, yeah. Mate, it was it was wild. Like it was overall, it was a good experience. Right? Yeah, but it was fucking it was hard, and yeah. it was hard for different reasons. I thought, you know, I thought oh, it's gonna be hard. You know, the training's gonna be hard, and you know what I mean, like all the sparring and probably you know living with people you don't really know and all that kind yeah. of stuff. But where was where was it? The house at? was, was it in like, Vegas? No, no, it was oh. here in Sydney. Oh, in yeah, Sydney. So they, we okay. had it here, and you know, all the UK blokes came out came out to Oz, but we were like Darling Point, like you know what I mean, near Double Bay and all that. We had a big, yeah, yeah, a big okay. mansion there, and we all in this this house, but it was just like. Even though I was still like, um, I live in Sydney. I was still, I was like, just still being in that bubble because all you ever saw was the house and the gym every day. You no, know, there was no reading, no music, no really, no nothing, no radio, no contact to the outside world whatsoever. You're literally, you're literally in this bubble, you know. Wow. I guess it's create drama as well. What they want to see, could true, true. Man, just like. That uh, feeling of homesick, you know what I mean? But I'm, I'm still here. But like, you're you, still you're in like, the same suburb. Yeah. You, yeah. Um, and just the monotony of just like training and like house and the same people and like yeah obviously you didn't gel with some people in the house yep. you know but I'm pretty tolerable like I, I don't I'm I'm pretty easy to get back with. yeah um that was the hard part you know like just fucking wanting to get out and just walk down the road get a coffee and say hello to you you know yeah. your friends or give your mum a call or give the missus a call and just touch wow. base that's um that was the hardest and and the train load did become pretty hard as well you know and the fighting so many times in small in a small space, but it was a great experience. You know, I mean, I um, you know, I got some 
real good mates. So I'm still mates with now. Like, you know, yeah. Robbie Witter won his his uh, welterweight class yeah. in that. And uh, we had Manny Rodriguez, who I was training with at the time, yeah. who was in the house. And even, even, even the Pommy guys I still speak to, you know, Brendan yeah. Lockney, who's yeah. killing it now in the PFL. Ross Pearson still. Ross Pearson. He come to Australia and didn't oh, leave. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've been up and trained at his gym up on the Central yeah, Coast yeah. with Jamie Malarkey and the boys. Like, yeah, so made some really good, yeah. you know, like friendships out of that um, that experience. And, uh, and it was a great experience. You know, I didn't get the results. I was hoped. I wish, you know, I wish I'd have done things a little different in my fights. Yeah. But, um, yeah, still, still proud of the effort and uh, and the experience. It was great to fly the Aussie flag too, yeah, like being there was, and representing the country. Yeah. You know? So, was it? Where was it? Um, at was it the Gold Coast or Luna the final? Was it the yeah. like Gold Coast? Was yeah, it yeah, okay? Yeah. I, yeah. I do remember watching watching it because I think George Sotiropoulos. Yeah, coach, he was yeah. he was he was fighting Ross. Yep. Um, so I do remember that Smash series. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, oh wow, this is, what what is this stuff? This is all crazy, you yeah, know? Yeah. yeah. It's a great way to introduce the sport too to True. like a, a I guess a market or like an emerging market, you know. Yeah, um, they did great. It seemed like the series was a lot of fun. It, it was yeah, it was it was challenging. Like I said, for for other other reasons, I didn't really sort of expect going into it. But yep. yeah, it, it was unreal. You know, like, yeah, beautiful. And then you obviously 2013. Once you've done the Smash series, uh, 2013 was two things: your combat eight. Yeah, in New <laughs> was it in Newcastle that one? No, I didn't find the Newcastle one. I fought back on the uh, in the Sydney one when they brought okay. their promotion to Sydney. Yeah, but I was up in the Newcastle one. And my my coach Bernardo Treco, um, now he he was fighting up on that one. So yeah. that's where we got a taste for it. And, we, and we got, our good friend Nate Swaddling, he he yeah, was yeah. the one who was promoting it. That's right. That's, that's right. right. And he um it, it sort of had a concept that. It sort of started, but then it finished, obviously, because promotions are very hard to do. Yeah, yeah. But that's where I, again, I think I met, I think I met you face to face at that Newcastle one. Yeah, that's right. Obviously, I think the photo we had together we were both eyes half closed because we were both drinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and then that, I think Ty, Ty, two of us have fought Hawaii. That's right. And he had a big follow on then, and even back then, I think he was like only, nineteen, eighteen yeah, or something. I thought, it, yeah, I thought. It, even 17, six, uh, 17 or 18, yeah, something yeah. like that. And he had a massive follow on there. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, wow, this dude's, this dude can punch. Yeah. This dude's big. Well, yeah, he made short work up a wide. He was a fully grown man, you know, at the time and, and, and doing damage to himself. Yeah. But like, yeah, the whole concept of that combat eight was like pretty much bring boxers or strikers you know, and, right. and to fight MMA guys because it was, uh, I think the ground basic, game was only 30 seconds 30 or something. 30 seconds, yeah. You go for a takedown, you had 30 seconds on the ground to try and submit or yeah. uh, ground and pound. And yeah. then it was stood back up. You had the four ounce gloves on, like MMA. Yeah, basically just turned into a boxing match with um, because you couldn't kick, so it was just uh, when you're when you're standing, it was just striking, yeah. Like, yeah, boxing. So it just turned into a boxing match with those gloves on, yeah. Oh. So it made it, it, like great entertainment for the fans, yeah. You know, who 100%, often like, yeah. boo the stalling on the ground. You know, oh, I, mean? I enjoyed it when I was I was there. It was yeah, definitely I mean, uh, it's not black and blue though. That's like, the, yeah. <laughs> like but uh, yeah, it's a great experience. You know, to get to win that title in um in combat eight and yeah. Yeah. Then then debuted for the uh debuted with the UFC. Yeah, that's right. And that um, was was that in Brisbane? Brisbane when uh, Mark Hunt oh, fought Bigfoot. That, how, that crazy that, fight. Even to this day, because my brother and I were there as well. Yeah. And uh even to this day, the Hunt Bigfoot was probably the best heavyweight fight. Mate. I think the, the crowd was like thirteen thousand. Yeah. And even even like the thirteen thousand, it felt like twenty thousand in there. It was amazing Mate, when it, those two heavyweights went for it. Yeah, uh, I think. But you didn't have obviously didn't have a win. Obviously that nah, that, that thing. But still, it was just to be in that that atmosphere, yeah. Australian atmosphere, yeah. and everyone behind you, and, and what an amazing, a, amazing like main event. Yeah, I got obviously a uh, bit of sweet memories of my debut. Yeah, you know, yeah. went in there and just and just uh, didn't put it together. Um, but uh, like I said, like you know, I got back in. And then I'm on my next fight after that. But to be surrounded and be on that stage, you know what I mean? Oh, and feel, that, feel that atmosphere. Yeah, it was. Um, it was amazing. Yeah, I know? thought it was the best, one of the best heavyweights. And and for my, you know, for my brother to get up on his chair because he, he's not the most, you yeah, know, yeah, he gets yeah. gets fanatical about MMA. Yeah. But for him to get on his seat. Yeah, and join everyone. Just go, come on, Mark. Yeah, yeah. Like we were yelling out. Oh, it was just so crazy. It just because they were both out on their feet, too, oh, giving it their all. Like you Mark had like, a broken hand. Yeah, right. I think he started throwing those elbows. Yeah, yeah. he yeah. just enclosed Bigfoot. Come in. He was throwing elbows, yeah, yeah. and they were connecting and yeah. splitting Bigfoot. Bigfoot and that was like everywhere. in third round. It was just like, how do these dudes keep going on? Yeah. And they had, I think they went the five rounds. They did, yeah, with decision. And yeah. uh, I think it was a draw in the end. I think so. A draw in the end. But the downside, and Big Foot got pinged, got pinged yeah. for steroids or yeah, whatever yeah. it was, enhancement yeah. after that, which then, then you know, tarnishes that 
that heavyweight top, yeah, yeah. heavyweight fight. Well, I mean, I guess not for the crowd way, because yeah, the crowd remember Mark too. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's Mark right. Probably, like, so that's right for for Bigfoot too. And then and then anyway, from from there on, Mark was on fire, and they went all. Well, all that, like contesting yeah. for the interim title they, and that kind of stuff. And Bigfoot just was on a slide yeah. after that, you know. So, yeah, I think yeah. they Mark went on and they were putting everyone in front of him because they thought, let's just get this dude out of here. Yeah, and he kept knocking them out, walking off. Wow, the just walk the walk-off walk off knockouts, knockouts yeah. mate. Still, as I, as I've said, in plenty of of space, uh, like Mark to me, not only a close friend, but just one of the greatest of all times of yeah. what he's competed in. Yeah, yeah, and one yeah. is still outstanding for a. a a uh, career that's gone 30 years. Yeah. You know, that's across different codes, you know. And heavyweight boxing, career. Boxing, kickboxing, heavy. Yeah, exactly. And that's, 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 a, that's a crazy thing to do at, yeah. at that heavyweight, copping so much, but yeah. still battling it, anyone and everyone because you look at the K1 and Pride. Yeah. Well, I watched the, wow. head, the Pro Crop head kick just the other day. Oh, it was there. Yeah, it was doing the circulation around yeah, going, how tough it is. Yeah, like, man, he, he, he held cop nothing that, back on that kick. Go no him. way. No, no one else even – like Mark just gets up, up. They were just stiff as a board. Shakes the head and he's like, but I still think, you know, the Ray Cepho when Mark yeah, won the K1 yeah. and they yeah. fought Ray Cepho and they just stood with their hands down yeah, and yeah. took a, took time, to, uh, took sort of uh, spots in, yeah, in trying yeah, to punch turn, each other. Oh, that was a, that was. I remember watching that on like a VHS tape in the Philippines while on a surfing trip over there. It was wild. I was like, yeah, I couldn't believe what I was watching. Oh, yeah. that was some insane stuff. Yeah. But see, so you got in, uh, yeah, the combat UFC, you had a few fights under the UFC. Yeah, yeah. Uh, got cut in the 2015. After you got cut in the 2015, what was what was life after that? Obviously, you went into a little bit of the TVs and documentaries. Yeah. Uh, well, initially, I was gutted, obviously. It's yeah. I wanted my UFC career to go. And, um, but, I mean, that's, that's how it rolls. It's a pretty cutthroat industry, especially when you're you know, on, on the big stage in the big promotion. Yeah. Um, but then, uh, yeah, I, I was I, before I, before that I was already working for Fox Sports on UFC Fight Week. You know, yep, Rob yep. Tasker and Elvis Sinisek and yep. uh, Tara Rush was there at the start. Um, so that was great. You know, I, I really enjoyed talking about the sport. I love the sports. So yeah, to be able to sit on, you know, and uh, you know, be given a job and get paid to just talk about a sport you love was, it, it was yeah. fantastic. And um, yeah, did the book and then um, and. Uh, like you know, prior to that, you know, with with, with Mac and Mark, we had the film and stuff out, Fighting Fear, and um, you now that was all like I guess helped uh, steer me towards you know, the Fox Sports guys. Well, we had a, already had a relationship there yeah, with the guys at Fox Sports, so um, yeah, mate, I, I was pretty down, but for a while after after being, uh, cut. being cut and just like had some injuries and whatnot, and I eventually got I went and fought over in Japan and then, um, and. Didn't put in a performance. I had a really great camp. I'd moved back up from flyweight because I was hating fighting at flyweight. That's 57 kilos. Just, and that, just losing weight. Just It's a whole focus. The yeah. whole fight camp was focused on the number on the scales, you know. Yeah, and, yeah. And, um, yeah. and, like, I don't regret fighting no, that no, weight, but, like, you know. It's, like a, it's, it's a tough gig, but yeah, just looking at no, scales every day and go, fuck. Yeah, and just, just like, took the, the love out of training. I was always, always feeling flat. I went back up to, to Banner weight. It felt great. I went, I went out to Japan, had a fight, and – um. I just made a dumb decision on the ground and got subbed, and yeah. um, kind of also realized the fire was kind of like I don't know, like it was just I didn't have that that um that bloodthirsty approach to, to I don't know to the yeah to the fight. So I started thinking like maybe yeah this uh could be it again. I had a daughter at the time, so kind of like priorities have shifted. I want to try and provide more money and do that and put put a focus back on work. Exactly. Um, yeah. But then, like, I still love training, still love competing. So it was like, and not long after that, I just said yes to a pro boxing fight that my mate uh, approached me about to raise some money for the PCYC locally at home. And so I took on a, a pro boxing fight, which was great, yep. under, under Tane Del Vecchio from no, Bondi. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bondi, really enjoyed, Homes of Champions. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed that. And that's something I still would like to do in the future, like, whether it be boxing or kickboxing, you know, step in the ring and, and fight professionally. Well, I haven't closed it all completely on, on mixed martial arts, but in reality, like, I know the commitment it takes to oh, find that 25, 30 hours a week to prepare for it. Um, As you say, like yeah, priorities so change, pre- daughter. And like, it was got- the end all and be all for so long, you know. Yeah. And I'm happy, like, even though it's, I look back with um, some regrets and some, like, you know, some, yeah, some 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 hard memories, you know, I wish I'd have yeah. done better and, like, make mistakes I've made and things that still eat away at me. Like, I'm pretty happy with what I accomplished. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, like, after that, I just sort of, Shifted into like a bit of a, a normal kind of life role, you know. I mean, working, still surfing as much as I can, still love training. Um, yeah, got, I was lucky with some, the opportunities that Fox Sports gave me. Yep. Um, 
Yeah, and then then I just as I moved on, so a lifeguard down at Ramit Council, so oh, do that as well as lay carpet. And just once I had my daughter Grace, it's yeah. kind of like your priorities shift, and you want to spend time with them, and yep. um, yeah, and just to provide for the family and, and spend that quality time with you, you know, the little one that changes yeah. every day. You don't want to oh, miss out on it, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, that's that's where it gets to where it's sort of priorities change, and then you go and you get to stage in your fighter, and you go. You've done what you've done, which is still credible in in all ways, yeah, surfing, yeah. fighting, and then you go, what what is really left for me? Like if you if you're not going to really get to the stage and you just turn into a journeyman, then it doesn't really turn out that well. You know, mm. you're only just collecting little bits of paychecks here and there. Yeah. You've got to come to a point where you go, am I going to reach a world champion? Probably yeah. not. Am I, you know, am I content with what life is? Yeah, yeah. And I think. Where I found once I I finished fighting and a few other uh, people who I who I chat to, once they finish fighting, it's sort of they go into that lull where they're not sort of that whole crowd and the whole yeah, yeah. The well highs yeah the highs the highs the highs the that you, but they they sort of start to find that in in giving back to the young uh, martial artists coming yeah, through yeah. and start the coaching role you know yeah, like yeah. turning up the training just doing a okay I'm going to start coaching on a Tuesday Thursday yeah. help the boys out it's funny you said that because I just started coaching at uh Have you? my mate Sav uh, Craig Roberts has opened Gracie Botany and oh uh, true uh, jujitsu and uh and I'm just helping out with the nogi on Monday nights now just in a very small role you know my mate Ryan is still like the, you know, the head instructor there but just started making my like I'm trying to get to the gym as, as much as I can and just started going some routine back in training with my jiu-jitsu and uh, really enjoying helping coach with the no-gi beautiful and uh, yeah it does it. you're right it feels that like you know that you're sort of that uh, I guess that little gap that professional yeah. fighting kind of leaves and uh, yeah you're right and, like you don't want to be the guy who's just you know fighting sort of for like the sake of it for the sake of it like yeah. if I want to compete I want to compete on, on a high level against a good opponent and I know what that takes, you know, yeah, that yeah. takes away. It is a selfish lifestyle you live to prepare yep. for those kind of uh, those fights, and I just that's not what I want. I want to yeah. put my time in, you know, with my daughter, and obviously like work and whatnot, things that you know yep. I've got away with. I guess kind of avoiding taking serious for so long. You know what I mean? Yep. And uh, now it's time to just do that, and, and I'm happy with it. I'm yeah. content with it, and I still love training. Like I said, I want to compete in jiu jitsu. I wouldn't mind jumping in the ring and boxing or kickboxing again professionally. Um, but it's all going to make sense, you know what yeah, I mean? Like 100%. it's got to do it. Yeah, and, that's what, and not that's come what too me much brother and I say. Yeah, we go. If if it doesn't make dollars, yeah. it don't make sense. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That's that's our saying these days. Obviously, you get through living with nothing all your life yeah, most yeah. of the time, in Vinny's clothes, whatever. Yeah. And then you get to that stage where you go, you know, wasting a lot of time. If you if it's not making dollars, it yeah. just doesn't make sense. And it's not a matter of going, okay, I want to just make money off everything. Yeah, yeah. And you still give back and you still do your training, coaching and giving yeah, back yeah. to the community. But when you do when you're valuable time and there's something you don't want to do, yeah. It's gotta it's gotta make dollars to make the sense. Exactly. So. And then like for the all of my career basically, like the passion and the drive and the motivation. It wasn't. It was just to do, to do the best you could, become the best, you know, mixed martial artist you could, achieve goals that you set yourself. And it wasn't really about cashing and earning some money, but it was just I was so driven by becoming the best fighter I could be, you know. And yep. once that starts to waver and you start to worry about bills and stuff, you're still fighting professionally, but like that's the, the making, reason as to why you're doing yeah. it starts to change a little. Well, then like that's when starts for me things start to slip a little bit and. And I'll sit back and question, like, you know, why am I doing this? Am I doing it for my ego? Like, because oh, I still didn't quite achieve what I want to do. I've got to get back in there and, like, go out on a high or whatever. Yeah. Like, I think that could be a downward spiral. And you see too, so you know? many – I see, like, being more in the boxing game these days and, and loving the boxing all the time, even though I've done a lot of uh, MMA striking. But – boxers that just carry on just doing the journey stuff yeah, you know yeah. you know they train for six weeks yeah. and they might turn up to a uh, a fight night yeah. get their get their thousand dollars yeah yeah you know and you think oh the coaches aren't making nothing that's why there's never any money in it yeah, yeah. unless you get to that you know and, and these days if you've got big followings and you're a character yeah, yeah. yeah or you're a sportsman crowd cr- uh code crosser yeah yeah then it starts uh, that's where the money is because then you're attractting other people yeah, buying yeah. the pay-per-views exactly and, yeah, yeah, you know yeah, but exactly. the journeyman's a very the fight journeyman is a very sad thing for me to see yeah and i think it's also too that like not just for the money they, don't, they just can't let go of that they are the the, the the high of stepping through the ropes you know, I know what i mean the buzz of it's crazy of being in there you know it's addictive so yeah. like no yeah sometimes they just don't want to like admit to themselves or just like hey i'm done with it like you know yeah. what i mean like say and that's half of me. Like that's why I still want to jump in like yeah, box yeah, or yeah. kickbox or love jumping on the mats and competing in jujitsu. You know, because yep. because I like that challenge. I yeah. like I like the, the competitiveness of it. Yeah. I like challenging myself. But now I got to scale it down and do it where it's like appropriate and like sensible for me and not coming at a cost where it's going to affect my daughter or affect my livelihood or or you know 
Yeah. Correct. Yeah. You yeah. Know, a lifestyle that I still want to live. You know, I still want to live a good lifestyle where, yeah, you know, I can earn money and still surf and travel and have that balance of time with my you know, family and friends yeah. and you know, my girlfriend and, um, and you know, do the things I love. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, yeah, no, I think no. when I was training for fights, everything else got put in the back burner and it was yeah. just tunnel vision. Well, it's, to a that. Sel- it's a selfish sport. You got to, it because it's a deadly sport. It has to be selfish. So, like, it has to, like, I don't, exactly I never felt right. bad in like being selfish. Yeah. about it because it had to be you know what I mean but there comes a time where it's sort of like it's a deadly sport am I going to get to where I need to get to yeah. if not is this a risk I need to take yeah. I need to you know still live Yeah, yeah. and that's the hardest thing when you're only earning a thousand dollars for a fight to turn up and you're fighting six or eight rounds and, yeah, yeah. and you've trained six weeks you, you take all that time away and you add it all up per hour yeah. what you're making Sometimes it'd be on four dollars fifty an hour. Yeah, you're like, t- exactly. Wow, so, that's when you when you size it up like that, and you yeah. go, like, life isn't about earning four dollars fifty an hour these yeah. days. But and like I said, the risk of like you know, as you get old too, like the you know, the head trauma, all that kind of stuff. Though, how much you don't want to still be putting body, body, and not just head trauma, but like the physical toll it takes on the body. Like, 100%. I still want to be surfing when I'm a yeah, hundred. Yeah, you know yeah, I, mean? yeah. I still want to be doing jitsu when I'm a hundred. Yeah. Like, all that kind of. Stuff. I still want to be around doing the pads. Yeah. I don't want to get hit anymore. But that's like, right. That's I still right. want to be like, I want to try like, yeah put a, like a value on like the, my lifestyle for the rest That's of my right. life, you know what yeah. I mean? And not just keep grinding it out for yeah. like, for, for what, let's say for what cost, or like what are you getting back from it now? Like nothing, but nothing. The, the cost of what's coming and the risk of just fucking, yeah, it's been walking around, if, limping around and yeah, drinking well, soup through a straw the rest of your life. Yeah, so, oh man, well we say sometimes we, we see fighters or, or doesn't matter what sort of sport they're into and we go, oh man, you know, they're, they're drawing ducks on walls yeah. and they're trying to feed them. Yeah, yeah. Like that's, you know, that's, that's our saying. And we're like, it's sad, yeah. but that's, that's how some of them have got, you yeah, know, yeah. some of the, the speech, yeah. you know, you can't understand them. And yeah, there's yeah. a few boxes that, that were great boxes in their time. Yeah. Uh, they, they went through their problems, alcohol, whatever. Yeah. If you sat and talked to them today, you wouldn't be able to understand a word they say. Yeah. yeah. I think it, I think it's all, it's all married in too, like to, to head trauma too. I think like the brain takes that much battering around, you know, whether it be MMA, boxing, yep. kickboxing. You do like lose, I don't like it, you know, I've heard little things about it. Does it affect you? you be able to like handle like emotional regulations and I stuff and yeah. mood and all that kind of stuff. It's all tamper around. So then you go, it's very easy to make dumb decisions and just try to like, yeah, like depression obviously is a, is a, it's a CTE, symptom yeah. of that CTE and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, definitely. all that just ties into, you know yeah. what I mean? Uh, that trying to fill a void, maybe not being able to like emotionally regulate yeah, and being, being like a little bit of depression all that kind of stuff it's just a, crazy, it's a hard one to manage yeah. and especially if you don't have a good network around you, you that's know? right which yeah. is very very important what yeah. so what if you were going to give uh, well first of all what some advice like you what what's the best advice you got when you were sort of whether it was growing up or in the fight game or whatever what what sort of stands out if there was any any advice I, um, that you got given yeah I got a I've been lucky to get other than, keep, bit, other than to keep your clothes yeah. on, Richie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whether or not you know, I chose to listen to the good advice yeah. or not. Um, yeah, like a lot of things, and, and Mark was a good, he, he put things in a, in a good perspective too because we're always doing things to step in our comfort zone. It's like, you know, yeah, don't let the fear of something prevent you from Stop doing it, it, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, right. Um, yeah, like just, yeah, the, the best moments of your life are just on the other side of that fear, you know yeah. what I mean? And uh, that that was very true in the in the water, very true in, in martial arts because I was I was probably more had more anxiety, more fear around fighting than I ever did being in the ocean. I think true. Even when I, like when you think about it, logically, being in the ocean is way more dangerous. You know, yeah, you yeah, hundred yeah, percent. And the fights over, there's no doctor stand by. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, like yeah. Don't let the head noise and the fear and anxiety over things stop you from achieving what you want to do, yeah, you know. Beautiful, and uh, beautiful. and don't be scared. Of, don't be scared of failing too. Don't yeah. fear of failure. Like failing's part and parcel of life, and yep. it's like the failures are going to be the you, yeah, yeah, those little bits of gold too. You're going to look back yeah, on it. You know, without failures, you're not going to you're not going to grow and move forward. Yeah. So yeah, don't be scared of failing. No, and, that's and don't that's that what fear. your uh, advice. If you were had to give it to young groms or young women in the sport, yeah, that would what what would be in a nutshell, maybe yeah. Don't be, don't be scared of failing, you know. Yep. And uh, and everyone's scared in life, and regardless, and fear is a part of life. Yeah, Whatever route you try, choose to take. Yep. But don't have that fear. Yeah. Yeah. Get get in the way um, of you trying to achieve what you want to achieve. You know. Beautiful. Um, yeah. So, I can see so many people, especially in the fight game too, like they they don't have to do it for what people may think, or they yeah, don't want to yeah. or protect a record, all that kind yep. of stuff. But it's um. Yeah, I just don't think you, you just don't grow if you don't get out of comfort zone and, yeah, yeah. And, and face some adversity and have those times. Yeah, 
So. No, true, true. Mate, I just want to uh, thank you for coming on the Rich Life Thanks Projects, mate. I've, I've been uh, excited to sit down with you for a long time. Uh, obviously, why the Texan going crazy, yeah. but uh, <laughs> but I just appreciate your time, man, and uh, yeah, always been a, uh, a friend and a big fan of yours and the boys up there in uh, Maroubra, and I just yeah. want to uh, thank you for coming on the uh, Rich Life Likewise, Project, mate. brother. Thanks for having you're me. You're a champion. You're and, a champion. Uh, I love the concept because, mate, when we were sitting here talking about you know, a rich life and what is a rich life, Man, it's, I, I, I'm intrigued to see what others have to think about what makes yeah, their life yeah, rich, true, you know what I mean? And uh, you take a lot from other people's experiences and their stories. Um, so, mate, keep it going, mate. Yeah, I'll, be, I'll be appreciate it. in. I nah, appreciate that, brother. <laughs> Thank you for coming, man.